Hey guys, it's Alex C with TFB TV. A while back I did a video about 5 firearms I regret buying and it quickly became one of the most watched videos I have ever made. I thought as a counterpart it would be fun to make a list of 5 firearms that I'm glad I bought. This does not mean this is a list of my favorite firearms I own, in fact a few of these don't get out of the safe very often at all. Instead the criteria is a bit broad. The gun could have gotten me into a different type of shooting for example or helped me appreciate certain types of firearms more deeply. So here we go. First up is the first AR-15 I ever bought. This is a Rock River that I purchased in I believe 2006. Damn how time flies. This was the first military style semi-automatic I ever acquired. Ten years ago the market for this kind of thing was nothing like it is today and sporting goods stores like Bass Pro would never dream of carrying such a thing. Remember that we were just two years out of the federal assault weapons ban, which nobody really thought would be allowed to expire. So manufacturers took a while to get the whole thing sorted out. Remember that until about a year or two ago, Colt AR still had the damn law enforcement only mark as a holdover from the ban days. When I was growing up, you saw trucks with gun racks in the back window all over the place in Dallas-Fort Worth, which were much smaller and had much more of a western feel back then. You would never really saw AR-15s or anything like that out in the wild, but I knew they existed and damn it, I wanted one. I did some internet searching and found that I could buy a gun online and have it shipped to a dealer for pickup, which was a new experience for me. So I found a reputable dealer who specialized in AR-15s and I had it shipped to Texas. I still vividly remember the time between the package sent to package delivery seeming like a year. I couldn't wait to shoot it and the first time I took it to the range and did shoot it, it stopped working. Luckily for me, one of the range employees was an old Vietnam vet who came over and noted that the carrier key came loose. He tightened it back up and it got right back to business. Over the time I had the gun, I have hung various tactical crap on it, but as I got older and matured a bit, I took a step back and said, why do I need all this? Now it's a little simpler. Something we all take for granted today is how far the AR market has come. That notorious chart that circulates the web detailing all the info about AR-15 manufacturers what they do and don't do, is the kind of thing that leads to manufacturers improving their products. The first AR-15 I bought got me interested in semi-automatic rifles. And really, I think if I had not bought that rifle, I would not be here doing this today. I learned a lot by running this rifle into the ground, firing as much ammunition as I could afford through it. Ventura Munitions wasn't helping me out with ammo back then. And it's special to me because of this. Next up is my Beretta 92FS. How boring, a run-of-the-mill 9mm pistol that everyone is familiar with. The 92 was not my first handgun by any means, but it was the first one I actually enjoyed shooting. Most handguns I've fired prior to the 92FS were either too small or simply not fun, so I wrote off an entire category of firearms, pistols, and didn't pay them too much attention. When I picked up a 92FS, I found that it fit well in my hand, the trigger was nice, I liked the sights, and the controls were great. So I rented one at my local range and shot better with it than I had any previous pistol. It felt pretty miraculous to have a handgun do what I wanted it to do, and in a comfortable way, so I knew I had to have one. This is the one that I ended up with and the holster wear is from being toted around under a jacket. When I turned 21 I got a concealed carry permit right off the bat, shooting a perfect score in the class and getting a hat tip from the instructor, which made me feel pretty smug. And I had no other pistol. So I found out pretty quick that the 92 isn't ideal for concealed carry, but with a loose jacket it does work. The gun is not jammed on me ever. You know how every internet gun video, forum, etc. is full to the brim with people claiming that they have thousands and thousands of rounds through every pistol they own? Well I can honestly say that this one has been run through the ringer, and as my only pistol for a while it was also carried on hunting trips and shot in competition with. I love the 92FS. It's a great gun that fits me well and brought me a deeper appreciation for handgun shooting. This is one I won't ever sell because I know I would regret doing so. And it has been a dependable, great gun. Next up is the Ruger 1022. And I'm cheating here because I didn't technically buy it, but we will get to that a little later. I'd shot numerous 22 rifles when I was growing up and I think this kind of desensitized me to any fun that came along with that. Hell, I remember even at summer camp they had rifle ranges for us to practice on as children, 
and it was by no means rare to just shoot cans out of boredom in the backwoods. I'd never treated 22s irresponsibly or like a toy as the rules of firearm safety and the dangers they posed when used unsafely were properly beaten into my head. That said, I knew that popping a soda can with a 22 wasn't nearly as cool as that time once a year when I got to crack off a deer rifle or some 20 gauge shells. It wasn't until college that a lack of funds led me back to rimfire stuff. I had a 22 rifle from years before when my grandfather gave it to me, but I'd nearly forgotten about it. So I brought it home one weekend and bought a few boxes of 22 to practice with, and then I was hooked. For less than $20, you got 500 rounds that would keep you busy all day. Not only would I target shoot with it, but my roommate and I would go out and rabbit hunt all the time. And before you ask, yes, I do enjoy wild rabbit, especially in pot pie form. So it didn't take me long to realize that I needed a better 22, because heaven forbid we leave anything stock, ever. I found that a huge aftermarket for 1022s existed, and eventually I ended up with a new stock, trigger, barrel, scope mount, scope, buffer, charging handle, and eventually a suppressor. Now I have a hell of a good shooting 22, and I still love taking it to the range. I have kept all the stock parts in case I want to convert it back to the original configuration, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. This little Ruger has helped me hone my shooting ability for cheap, gave me an excuse to go out into the country, and will be with me for years to come. If that does not make it a great candidate for this list, then I do not know what will. Fourth, we have my Swedish Mauser, the gun that genuinely got me curious about historical firearms. I'm not exactly sure when I bought this gun, but it was years ago at a gun show for just a few dollars from a private seller. I'd always appreciated old rifles, but this one was neither my first Mauser nor my first CNR gun. When I took it to the range, however, I was taken aback by the ease with which I was able to ring steel at 300 meters. 6.5 Swedish is a hell of a cartridge too, and I could sing its praises all day, but that's another episode. This gun really got me reading deeper into bolt actions and wanting to collect as many as possible. The accuracy and craftsmanship that went into each rifle is apparent, and I've yet to find a comparably priced modern rifle that is anywhere near as capable. While I do prefer large ring guns, I really got to know this gun by shooting it extensively. It's one of the few rifles that has scored perfectly on the running gun course, and I can still shoot remarkable groups with it. The trigger is excellent, and while it does cock on close, this is something I can overlook due to its numerous other positives. Some people look down on small ringing actions being lowly peasant Mausers, but really, unless you're planning on having a gunsmith rechamber your gun in some ridiculous magnum cartridge, don't worry about that. M96 actions are plenty safe, and while 98 actions are stronger, the small ring guns are no slouch. While the current cheap flavor of the month surplus rifle is the Mazda Nagant, aka Garbage Rod, surplus Mausers were the $20 lady of the night for decades. Literally, too, you could buy surplus Mausers for $20. Oh, how I wish that were still the case. So I largely attribute my love of vintage firearms to this one gun, and for that reason, I'm glad I bought it. Lastly, we have a bit of a wild card, the Mazda Nagant M9130. I'm just kidding, those suck. Realistically, lastly, we actually do have something of a wild card. The Mauser C96 broom handle. Pretty weird pick, I suppose, but hear me out. I've always been fascinated by mechanical things, and the Mauser C96 is an example of an extremely complex design by modern standards that works perfectly and helped usher in and legitimize semi-automatic pistols. While the old broom handle was by no means the first semi-auto pistol, it was a huge success. Lawrence of Arabia carried one, and also a young Winston Churchill who used one in battle, saying that, I saw my men dragged from their horses and cut to pieces, and was surrounded by what seemed like dozens of men. I rode up to individuals firing my pistol in their faces and killing several, three for certain. A man came at me with an upswung sword, so close that the pistol actually struck him. At this point, Churchill noted his squad was reforming 200 yards away after the chaos when an enemy sprang up from the ground and lunged at him with a spear. Churchill dodged the dervish's attack and again used his C-96 to fell the enemy. I shot him at less than a yard, he said. He fell to the sand and lay there, but I did not worry about it, for I found that I had fired the whole magazine of my Mauser pistol. So I put in a clip of 10 cartridges before thinking of anything else. It occurred to Churchill that if he had not entered a battle with an injured shoulder, he would have relied on his sword to defend himself and may have been killed. 
The C96 broom handle is the perfect combination of mechanical complexity, history, innovation, and an enjoyable shooting experience. No other pistol shoots like a C96, and you certainly feel the power and authority the pistol offers when you pull the trigger. The pistol barks with supremacy, and the commanding 30 Mauser cartridge is stout. It's hard to explain why firing a C96 is so gratifying as it's so ergonomically different from what we have today, but shooting one provides an amazing experience. So these are the five firearms I'm glad to have bought. For the most part, each one either deepened my appreciation for marksmanship or history, and these two aspects of my life together have brought me here to this point, making videos that I hope people enjoy. While we aren't a political channel, one of the major reasons I do this is because I hope that in my own way, that is presenting firearms in a straightforward and cordial manner, it may introduce some other people to firearms who previously either had an aversion or no interest. So that's something small that I, one man with a camera, can do. This is Alex C. with TFP TV. Thank you very much for watching.